The longest family-run eatery in Seattle is also one of the oldest bars in the city, and they are well known for doing things their way. Join us as we explore the infamous dive bar diner, the Five Point Cafe. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Phoebe. And we're the couple behind In the Great Wide. We were in Seattle during our month-long Amtrak USA Rail Pass adventure. Seattle was our last major stop before we headed back to Los Angeles. And we spent uh, one of the two days that we were in Seattle at the Seattle Center, which is where the Space Needle is, along with Chihuly Garden and Glass and Mopop. The Museum of Pop Culture, for Bad. those who don't know. Uh, we needed somewhere close for lunch, and the Five Point Cafe was just a couple blocks away. Yeah, uh, the Five Point Cafe is a proud dive bar slash diner uh, serving the working man since 1929. I was surprised to find out that it has been there for longer than the Space Needle, which wasn't built until 1961. I figured that they chose that location because it's prime real estate. It's so close to so many tourist attractions. No, but the Space Needle chose them. Yeah. Yeah, it's been there for much longer than the Space yeah, Needle, yeah. actually. The original owners, the founders of the Five Point Cafe, Preston Smith and his wife Frances, opened a sister restaurant, the Mecca Cafe, half a mile away in 1930 on Queen Anne Street. And when the Prohibition ended in 1933, the Five Point Cafe and the Mecca Cafe were two of the first bars to start serving alcohol in Seattle. This makes the Five Point Cafe the oldest continuously operating bar in Seattle. And the Mecca Cafe actually lost their liquor license shortly after they received it in 1933 because Preston, the owner, refused to pay a $1,000 bribe to corrupt local politicians. Apparently corruption was a big thing back in the 30s in Seattle. Like, apparently every time a police sergeant came by, he had to slip him a $20 bill. And this was 1933, early 30s. $20 was a lot, a lot of, money of money back then. <laughs> and you're serving burgers for 15 cents or 10 cents. Like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, especially a thousand dollars. Ugh, can't even imagine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that streak of bucking authority uh, would run through the cafe for many years to come. The Smith family always took care of their workers through the Depression when times were bad and World War II when things were really tight and they had rations on sugar and various food items. They would still take care of their employees. Yeah, and the employees showed their appreciation uh, and loyalty for that by working for the Smiths for upwards of 20 years. Yeah. So it's they a great out. company. They seemed like really good people to work for. They really took care of their people. So, you know, why not? And, yeah. and the Five Point Cafe was hugely popular. It was very popular. Yeah. So when Dick, the Smith's son, uh, took over in 1975, he also made a name for himself by fighting against the system and doing things his own way because he fought against uh, the Seattle Commons Project which would have made Paul Allen, a co-founder of Microsoft, even more rich uh, by displacing hundreds or thousands of residents uh, in Seattle to create a park that would theoretically have rivaled New York's Central Park. Yeah, uh, the Smith family has always been about that neighborhood. Uh, it's, it, it's a great neighborhood and they are very reluctant to have it change, uh, which makes sense, they've been there forever. In fact, when construction started there that would block the restaurant's view of the Space Needle, he installed a periscope in the men's restroom so you could get a good look at it while you did your business. I, a part of me is like, I wish we would have known that when we were there. Uh, yeah. Um, but also, I, it's in the men's restroom. I didn't so. know about it. I'm 100% <laughs> certain that I went into that restroom and I used that restroom and I don't remember it being there. But I really wish I had because I so would have used it. You would have looked at, looked I for it. I would have yeah. gotten video of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when Dick passed in 2001, the new owners uh, tried to make the Five Point Cafe less divey, uh, but the restaurant uh, came close to shuttering permanently. Yeah, it didn't really go over well with the crowd, uh, with the population of Seattle. They liked the bar and diner the way it was. Oh, it was yeah. So in 2009, uh, a new owner bought it, and he returned it to the Five, the five Point to its no-nonsense roots, and it has been thriving since. So as we were walking up to the Five Point Cafe, we noticed that there was a line. It, it is a very popular place, yeah. Um, but they are definitely no-nonsense because they had uh, signs up uh, for COVID safety 
saying that you had to wear a mask and if you didn't like that then you could just leave it was uh it was a nice it was kind of a breath of fresh air because you know we've been traveling for a month and not everybody really seemed to care about covid at the time and and we're very conscious about it so it's like you know we're trying not to get sick and it was nice to see them just be like nope this is how it is yeah and if you don't like it leave because there's 20 more people behind you that want to want to get a burger yeah um, and they also have notes in their menus about treating the staff kindly um, and that they serve everyone at the Five Point Cafe except for people who are intolerant to everyone else. Yeah, don't come in saying bad things about people. They will ask you to leave. Yeah. Uh, they are all about welcoming everyone. Everyone's just there to have a good time, eat some food, hang out for a bit, and go home. Yeah. But it sounds like the place can get a little rowdy at times. And <laughs> I, I guess so. some people don't like that, you know? Yeah. So if you are worried about it, then this may not be the spot for you. Um, but if you don't mind, then great, you know? It's we didn't real... mind. Yeah. <laughs> we thought it was a great vibe. It really feels like it was made for locals. Uh, when we were in line, there was a bunch of families that, that came up. And right as we were walking up, all these families came up and it was like, Ugh, With a bunch of children. So many kids. Yes. Uh, and we were just like, all right, it's going to put our name in. You know, yeah. it, obviously everyone came at the same time. The host was like, whoa. And uh, and we were just like, it's cool. You know, not a big deal. There was only the two of us. It was not a big deal. We had to wait a little yeah. bit, but it was fine. It was no more than 10 minutes, even, if even that. Yeah, we didn't have to wait long at all. Yeah. And just for the record, we don't really like, it's not like we hate families. But we don't have kids, and when we are, like, out traveling around, we don't want to deal with strangers' kids screaming and, like, yeah. running into us all the time. Yeah. It's just, you know, it kind of ruins a lot of experiences um, when they're not your own kids, when you yeah. don't know the kids, you know? So that's what that's about. Anyway, so when they sat us, the host said that they would put us on the locals' side, uh, instead of the tourists side, which we did not know was a thing. We did not ask for that. It was just what they decided to do based uh, on our look and vibe. I think vibe. They, they could see that we were not thrilled about the children screaming and running around. Uh, no more than they were. Uh, they'll serve the tourists and, and especially the mm -hmm. ones who are obnoxious and, and loud because, hey, it's money. But at the same yeah. time... They, they stick to people they want to hang out with over on what they call the tavern side, which mm -hmm. we didn't know that at the time. Uh, and the families the, with children go on the cafe side. Yeah, which is much more diner-like. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the tavern side is much more dive bar. Yeah. yeah, we were so grateful to be treated like locals because being considered a tourist is the worst. Yeah, yeah, we like to go places and, and, and act like we live there. I mean, that's like, that's it's like, hey, I, I'm going to be there for three days. I'm going to be see what it's like to live there because you never know. Maybe we'll move there at some point. Maybe we'll hang out. You, you know, it's like, it's almost like we're testing out the places, you know, yeah. rather than just going to stare at buildings and monuments and then leave. It's like we, we want to get into the nitty gritty of the locals, like what they like. Yeah. Um, but that experience made us think more about what makes for a good tourist and a bad tourist. So I'm curious to know, tell us in the comments uh, what you think makes a good tourist or bad tourist. Uh, and let us know if you would like us to make a video about it with our thoughts on the matter. We have a lot of thoughts about it. So if you want us to make one, let us know. Uh, the bartender is really awesome uh, at the Five Point Cafe. Uh, the place had a very punk bar feel to it with like stickers everywhere of bands and some not bands and like just stickers everywhere. Uh, yeah. And really loud music playing off the digital jukebox mm -hmm. uh, that just as you came in. Or, um, it was it was great. Yeah, there was also a giant uh, moose head covered in bras. It was tall so. enough that I'm assuming that the bras were thrown on while people were there drinking. All right. That's the impression I got. <laughs> Just whoosh, throw it up there. <laughs> now you know you're having a good night. All right. It's a good time. Good time all around. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it is a pretty small place, though. Um, it has bar seating and a few booths along the wall uh, on the tavern side. Yeah. And the cafe side is definitely like a tiny little diner. Yeah. 
Um, but then they also had a small covered patio out front uh, with a couple of small picnic tables. Yeah, and the outside was full. It was mm -hmm. completely full. And, and it, it's funny because it gives it the impression that the place is packed on the inside. And it wasn't really, I mean, it, it, it was busy, but it wasn't super packed. But yeah. it was a really nice day, uh, as we referenced mm -hmm. in our uh, Space Needle video. It was a really nice day, so a lot of people were sitting outside. Yeah, we really lucked out with the weather that yeah, day, for sure. We definitely did. Um, and the food was really tasty. Uh, the portions were a lot bigger than most of, the, most of the other places that we had been, especially on our month-long trip across the country and back. Yeah. Um, but nothing on the menu, I think, was more than $20. Um, so there was a lot of affordable meals. Yeah. The anyway. place was founded to be a blue-collar diner. Like, it was, it was open 24 hours a day with the purpose of serving people that got off work whenever they got off. You could come in, mm -hmm. stop in the Five Point, and, and get some food, have a beer, or whatever. Yeah, I got a chicken bread steak. Um, the biggest in Seattle, evidently. It's 11 ounces, according to the Five Point. Yeah, we don't have any actual proof of this. They just said it's the biggest, and it definitely was very big. It, it was a it was a decent chicken fried steak. Yeah. Yeah. I got a breakfast Philly cheesesteak, which I had never heard of before, so I was like, ah, I gotta try this. Uh, which is really tasty, and a side of cheesy grits because I make grits at home all the time, and I realized I'd never had any. Eat, I'd never eaten any by made by anybody else, so I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna order the grits." I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we both ordered the brass monkey, which is a pint of PBR with a splash of orange juice. So yeah. it's a beer mosa, you know. Beer mosa. Yeah, it was tasty. It was really good. Yeah, I, I it worked it. perfectly for what we needed. Uh, the only real problem you run into at the Five Point Cafe is that it's hard to take leftovers with you if you still have a, <clears throat> several more hours of wandering that day before you go back to your hotel or hostel. Uh, I carried around a bag for the rest of the afternoon because yeah. someone's chicken fried steak was very big. It was. Uh, I mean, the food portions are huge, so it was. It was. It's you're yeah. essentially going to have leftovers unless you stuff yourself, like I did. But uh, <laughs> but it's. You know, it's it's like, it, it can be, a, so just bear, keep that in mind when you're yeah, there. Yeah, you when know, you're they're, ordering. They're, they're definitely there, yeah, don't over order for sure, but they're definitely there to make sure you do not leave hungry. Yeah, and if we lived in Seattle, we'd probably be coming to the Five Point Cafe a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great feeling to feel like a local in a city that you've only been in for like 24 hours. To be treated like a local is incredible. Yeah, and the Five Point Cafe is open for 24 hours a day. Yeah, so. they only serve alcohol from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, and between 10 a.m. and 2 a.m. you have to be over 21 to be in the diner. So uh, just bear that in mind if you're taking trying to take your kids at midnight. Don't. Okay. I'm, I think you said between 10 a.m. and 2 a.m. you have to be it over is. 21. 10 a.m. and 2 a.m.? Or oh, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Yep. 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. You can only have kids in there from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's it. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad that we randomly found this place near the Space Needle for lunch. Um, and we definitely recommend coming here just for a break while you're sightseeing around the Seattle Center. Yeah. Because there's so much to do in that area. Yeah. And it's a, gr it's a great place just to go sit and relax, hang out. Uh, the bartender was so nice. He was so, super cool. Uh, everybody was really great. It was it had a great vibe, and it was it was great just to chill there for a while. Yeah, and give our legs a break from all the walking yeah. around. Yeah. So make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the videos we release twice a week reviewing specific places to go all around the world. And check out our website for more information on the Five Point Cafe and all the other bars and breweries we visited for Thirsty Thursdays. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the Great Wide somewhere. Yeah.